we have Dennis Siegel from Waste Management. And uh, Dennis, why don't you take us through the projects that uh, you guys are working on? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Travis. It'll be uh, a little bit of trash talk, right? So Waste Management, here at Waste Management, we, we operate the largest network of landfills in North America. And you know, with that, people are surprised of how an, oper how an operation of a landfill really looks. So we peel that cover back and you know maybe to help set the the scene here a little bit you know maybe you maybe you cut your own grass maybe you have a half an acre acre maybe maybe you got three acres maybe you're lucky enough not to cut any grass right so if you if you are cutting an acre of grass you can just imagine the time that it takes right now think of think of our landfills a typical landfill is hundreds of acres you're talking two three hundred acres plus Within that framework is a complex series of pipes, equipment such as pumps, compressors, sensors. In fact, there's an array of sensors from liquid levels, temperatures. There's a complete overall package that's looking to manage water and gas within that landfill. Because through the life cycle of a landfill, it will generate water and it will generate landfill gas. And you know, from our operational perspective, the, these equipments, these sensors, these pumps, these compressors are utilized to maintain and manage that, right? So we have the ability to collect the landfill gas and we have landfill flares that burn it off. In fact, we have a fleet of renewable energy plants as well that harness that landfill gas and turn it into electricity for the community. So <clears throat> what we were trying to do was figure out a way that we could help our frontline operations be able, in a position where they can get real-time data from those sensors, from that equipment, but we had to make sure we could do it in a way that we weren't adding another piece of equipment to the operations team. They're already, as we talk about, right, they're already having to go out and they have three plus hundred acres of, of, of land that they have to uh, consistently check on, uh, they have to be in touch with so they already have this equipment so we needed something that would be able to fit that framework and the perspective module really seemed to, to work well and we're really excited to continue to to bring this solution to our disposal business and you know with the real-time data that we are collecting we're able to uh, bring a new insight for that operations team so just to maybe if we could take uh, that set as we look going forward uh, here's an example of one of our landfills, and within the perspective module, uh, we are indicating all of the key points. We talked about the water and gas collection equipment that, that resides within a landfill, and we're able to quickly display that real-time data. There is no control room, right? This In a landfill operational space, it, there's not a control room where operations teams are gathering and, and they're huddling up and, and watching as data comes in. This is out 24-7 operations. There's no off switch. Uh, the water and gas uh, is, is, is consistently pulled off the landfill, and these systems are vital with that capability. So as we added some flexibility to our operations team, we were able to provide this type of solution. Here is uh, some information that's coming in from real time. As you can see, this is being shown on our one of our phones, one of our tablets. Uh, for here, this is information about storage levels of liquid within our, our tanking and our storage locations. And this is really allowing uh, the team to not only just take the data and be able to make better decisions with that real-time data, but it's also dri dri driving the analytics, right? We can get data and we can take it all day long and that's great. But what are we really gonna do with that data to then optimize and drive that efficiency and it's really being able to take it and harness it. So here's another example around information that we can take and we can package it up and get it to the frontline operations so they can make the right decision and make it in a timely fashion. And the other side is interacting directly with equipment. So here's an example using a, another tablet or phone where the operations team has this capability, and especially in today's environment where long range work capacity is, is something that everyone's striving for here at Waste Management. We wanna make sure that we're taking advantage of that as well. So just another example of one of our locations that's pumping down and, and maintaining liquid levels within that landfill, that operations team has that ability to get into that, that asset from anywhere uh, within, uh, within the world. Now, 
<clears throat> another benefit as we pulled this together, we probably didn't go into the mindset that we were thinking this was gonna be a benefit, but what we found out is the ability to have our historical real-time data hosted in a web browser, we were able to now harness not just resources locally, let's say within one landfill or one region, we were able to maximize our subject matter experts within our own organization to be able to help guide other team members within our, our, our operations to really bring that cross-functional component. And that's something, like I said, we didn't think about that coming out and we were looking to, to, to deploy this type of technology, but most certainly it's been a huge uh, advantage. And an example of that is operational teams in Florida perhaps could be helping somebody in Canada really diagnose problems in real time in a collaborative effort. You know, and if without the perspective module, that's that's not as easy as we would think it would be, right? It would be historically, as we would try to do that, it would be reports, it would be emails, right? And it would be this lagging event where over time it would be frustrating for that operations team. And here we're able to try to change the game with that. <clears throat> and then the other good piece about the technology that we're experiencing as, as well is the ability to really harness other information. So for example, we're showing an example of, of, uh, of weather and, and weather has an immediate impact and a large impact to landfill operations. If it's high winds, if it's a lot of rain, there's a safety component to this. So the ability to take perspective, add it to out data such as weather, we are then able to provide that information from a safety perspective and even from a forecast perspective for liquid management. And as we continue to talk about data analytics and what it really means, once again, here's an example of where we are allowing our operations team to really digest how the actual pumping system on the landfill is working versus having that same team trying to crunch down numbers and spending hours trying to really understand the operations. With this technology and the example we're showing here, it's no longer crunching of numbers, it's simply collaborating and, and be able to make decisions. And our commitment for, for environmental protection and sustainability within the, you know, the communities that we operate, it's things like this, it's the ability to have that power that really puts us up front. So as we continue, and here's another example is where we're taking the data and just for you know taking data, like I mentioned, is, is, is great, but as we really shape it so the operations team can make better decisions. Another example of where mass balance of liquid. This is something that typically operational folks and within our footprint would be doing once a week to kind of make sure that they're on point with the process, liquid management, here we're summing up something that would take hours into minutes. So it's an advantage um, that we see. Uh, it's an advantage that we're going to continue to explore. And, you know, with our, as I mentioned, with our commitment uh, to the operational spaces and the communities that we work in, uh, for us, you know, we also include a quality of life. And with that quality of life with our employees, they're able to use a screen like this to take a look at one of these pump stations. And I mentioned there's not a control room. So you can imagine if you are operating a landfill 24 seven and the lights never get turned off, that you're talking all times of, of, of the night, you're talking all types of weather. And to be able to provide this type of solution to that frontline operations team does elevate uh, a quality of life here for our organization. So and then just the one more screen here of, of another landfill of ours that's, that once again is highlighting key points of, of, of our water and gas infrastructure and able to allow that operational team to have that real time data for better decision making. So as we continue to, to look, right? So we, like I mentioned, we're really excited about how we are gonna optimize if it's looking at it from a perspective of, <laughs> no pun intended, of Internet of Things, you know, sensors within the footprint of, of our landfill operations. Uh, we definitely uh, see the value in making sure that our, our folks have that information. We didn't onload new equipment because the last thing we wanted to do was to tell our folks out in the field, our management staff, our technician staff, hey, here's another piece of equipment. 
half of the more than half the, the the team was already using tablets and phones. So perspective allowed us to simply just drop that in and continue to move forward. You know, preventing uh, another need for equipment to be added on as well, which is a huge benefit as well. So, you know, and as it's to sum it up again, you know, we we uh, we really think that um, you know, as we stare down, you know, long road. Uh, design and how we look to operate and even design our landfills going in, down the road from a future perspective, we're looking at that, right? So as we build out infrastructure, what, what moves do we need to take maybe to continue that optimization for visualization for our infrastructures, such for our water and gas collection? So we're excited. And, I, and once again, thanks for having us here today. Awesome. Thank you, Dennis, so much for, for showing the project and explaining you know, what you guys have been doing with it. Uh, it's really kind of cool to hear that some of that cross pollination you guys have within different organizations or you know different locations working together uh, on that. It's pretty pretty awesome to see.